Kia ora, I'm Erin J Doyle. Welcome to my channel. It being the first week of the month, it feels like I should be talking about my goals. What I did last month, what I'm going to do this month, but to be honest, I didn't do very much last month. So we're going to have a bit of a goal rollover. So instead, let's talk about writing stuff. One thing that I did achieve last month was that I managed to edit my Camino story to below 90,000 words. So hooray! Oh, it's been some work though. What I've been trying to do is go to all the sections where I've sort of flagged something needs work. Some of these things are quite easy, like checking spelling, um, making sure that you know something is consistent from a previous chapter. Some things are like tidying up the sentence, or something needs to be there to transition between this and that. Those kinds of things. So most of them are quite minor. And a lot of them I've actually just kind of gone, you know what, this is a clunky sentence, it's not really doing much for all the heavy lifting of trying to write it, so I'm just going to cut it out entirely. So I've gone from quite a lot of these down to only 14. I don't know how many I started with, but I feel like it was hundreds. So I feel like I've made quite a lot of progress on that, so that's great. And the other thing I've been doing is trying to wrestle a little bit with my descriptions. I've mentioned previously that... I write very precise description and that in the Camino story I've probably gone a bit overboard. For instance, I've previously deleted a three page description of a ham sandwich. In my defence, this was the sandwich. I mean, it deserved three pages of description, but I could let it go. Something I've been thinking about recently is that, in regards to my description, my critique partners were really divided. I think it's fair to say I had a 50-50 split between absolutely positive and absolutely negative. Like, these people would have re represented one in five star reviews. I had one group who were super positive about the language, the amount of description, some of them were asking for even more, and I had like the uber compliment comments like, I'm sure I've had at least two people say that from the sections of my Camino story that they've read that they have been inspired to do the Camino and they wanted to ask me questions about it. And I've also had someone from a description I had written look up the building and read about it and then again contact me gushing about the building and saying hey can you actually put even more description in that would have been really helpful. <laughs> so I'm like yeah super pro description. And then I have the camp who are like super, super negative on the description, like kind of insisting that all description, like literally every word of description in the entire book could be like taken out, drawn and quartered and buried kind of thing. Like, I feel like obviously people who are saying something quite negative about your work, obviously I'm a bit inclined to be like, well, they were just crazy monsters. I feel though it's more sensible to say my feelings were hurt that they didn't like my word baby and that their view was quite extreme because I feel like saying no description like literally no description ever is quite an extreme opinion particularly compared to these really really pro ones that I was getting but what was interesting was that it was 50 50 and there was nothing in the middle and it's quite hard to take that and kind of interpret it into an action that you can apply to your work. Because I can't actually please both camps at all. Anything that would please the pro-descriptors would infuriate the anti-descriptors. And no description at all would completely lose all the pro-descriptors. So either way, I think ultimately I'm probably writing a book that's going to really divide people just in terms of, not like controversial content, but in terms of the description. I think I'm going to get negative comments just because it's kind of decorative and pretty. But then I'm also going to get positive comments for exactly the same reason. So that's something that I'm really wrestling with, just trying to find that happy middle ground. I do think that what I'm writing is a story that requires a certain amount of description. Because I've got a character who's in this really foreign environment, so of course they're noticing all these things. And I think the setting also helps to kind of amplify some of the emotional experiences that the character is having. So opting for the no description or even just low description 
I don't think would quite work for the story that I'm trying to tell. I would actually be interested in knowing what you guys think, so if you've got thoughts on the uh, pro description versus no description idea, do let me know in the comments. Ultimately, I think it really comes down to what I, as the author, want to do. But if I want other people to read it, then I also have to think about them to a degree. But ultimately, I still have to write something that I'm happy with. And I would rather write something that I personally am really happy with, and maybe not everyone loves it, than to write something that I'm not happy with, but a whole bunch of people love. Like, a, you know, that whole selling out thing just doesn't really appeal to me. I feel like selling out was a strong term there. Writing to the market, maybe, is what I meant. But anyway. Something I am aware of when it comes to what description to keep and what description to cut is one of my original thoughts when I started to work on the Camino story, which was that I wanted to write something which accurately portrayed what it is like to walk the Camino. I met many people the first time I walked the Camino who were there because they had been inspired by the movie The Way. They had seen the movie and thought, oh my god, I want to do it, and they had come halfway around the world to walk the Camino, and then discovered that it wasn't like the movie said, and they weren't prepared. And I met many of them who said that they never ever would have attempted it if the movie had communicated what it would be like to do it. So in writing my own Camino story, I wanted to be a little bit more accurate about the trials. Obviously this works quite well for character development, but I also have the sort of feel of I need to have a little bit of accurate information in there in case anyone finds it inspiring. So it's also like informative and not quite educational, but you know what I'm trying to get at, right? So I feel like if I reduce the description too much, then I'd be violating that initial intention, which would be sad for me, and I think it would be potentially detrimental to the people in the pro description camp who were inspired by this book, because A, they really love the description, and B, what if I take out description that warns them not to do it? Not that I'm suggesting people shouldn't do the Camino, but I think you should do it with a good understanding of what it sort of involves. I don't have a good rule of thumb for figuring out what to keep, what not to keep, what information I can work into the story without kind of starting to just, you know, info dump and that kind of thing. I'm trying to do it all very, very subtly. Obviously this is requiring skill that I only hope I have. Anyway, I feel like I'm about to start wombling on to other topics, which I have done 11 previous times, 12 previous times. So I'm going to end this here. If you have liked this video, give it a like. If you're new, maybe hit subscribe and ring the bell so you can stay up to date with my various ramblings. If you've got any comments or thoughts on this whole description game, do leave a comment, educate me politely, and I'll see you next week. Bye! What was my thought, what I was going to say? Um, I was going to say something. What was I going to say?